Welcome to Beyond By Wings, the business side of dentistry, brought to you by Edwards & Associates PC. Join us as we discuss how to build your dental practice, optimize your income, and plan for your future. This podcast is distributed with the understanding that Edwards & Associates PC is not rendering legal, accounting, or professional advice. Listeners should consult with their business advisors before acting on any of the information that is shared. At Edwards & Associates PC, our business is the business of dentistry. For help or more information, visit our website at enassociates.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond Bite Wings. My name's Ash, and within the studio we have a very special guest. His name is Dr. Joseph Hull. He hails from Gregory, South Dakota, and where he also has his practice, Hull Dental Health. Um, in today's episode, we decided to talk about basically the employment landscape in the dental world, specifically in the rural parts, um, because it brings its own niche challenges. And we figured, why not have someone operating in a part like that that could share his experiences? So without fur- further ado, Dr. Hall, how are you today? I'm very good, Ash. Thank you so much for having me on the program. It's just an honor to be asked uh, to participate. So thank you. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your practice and what you do. Yeah. So I'm a general dentist. I've been in practice, graduated in 2001. So I've been in practice for a little bit now, which is hard to believe <laughs> those years have gone by. So we're a general practice. We're in Gregory, South Dakota. Hall Dental Health is the name small town in south central south dakota pretty close to the nebraska south dakota uh state line there mm-hmm. nice little rural community it's a community of about let's say 1400 with a with a surrounding area uh, let's say about 4040 or maybe 4400 in the county i see so rural, rural America. So it's farming, it's ranching, it's, you know, there's some small business, but just rural America. So we have a general practice. We do, you know, general dentistry, a lot of different things. And that's been our calling card to offer a lot of different things. It's, you know, my wife is the office manager, Kara. And so it's, it's, it's kind of a, you know, husband and wife family uh, operation, which is, it's not super unusual to see that, uh, right. but yeah, so our dream was to, you know, can, can we bring world-class dentistry to rural America? We're both from small towns, love big cities like, you know, Omaha and things like that. That's kind of the largest city link in Nebraska, of course, where I went to school. Great to, you know, visit, live there, but we, we wanted to kind of make our life in a smaller town because of the things that you can do in a smaller town you can be part of a community you can make a difference Um, we had an opportunity to look at this practice here an older doctor selling the practice it's kind of a fixer upper practice so we bought it there were some student loan uh incentives to locate in rural south dakota actually at the time south dakota was doing a student loan repayment program in shortage areas for dental personnel and I was actually the first one to to do that, go through that program. Really? Uh, yeah. And so that was a nice thing. And that helped me out, it helped us out, get a start, help out with some student loans. So the practice kind of, you know, we, we took over a pretty, uh, I would say it was outdated practice. I mean, looking back <laughs> on it and we built it and built it and built it and added this and added that and added capabilities and technologies and built it up and we faced a decision point, you know, what to do, should we continue or should we leave and go somewhere else? And we decided to just go all in and build a new six operatory office. We built that in 2010 and opened that in 2011. And so we're, we're in a really, really well-designed office facility, really nice office. Um, Dr. Mike Unthank out of Lincoln helped us do the uh, design. Mm-hmm pretty great office for a small little town. And so our, our goal, our purpose was to be attractive enough that it's worth not only the, the people in our community to come see us, but actually to survive, we need to draw from a pretty significant area around us. 
Right. And so that's, that's kind of our, our strategy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's been working. Uh, it is working. But, you know, I, I think since 2020 and beyond, I think the landscape's changed. I don't think that's an exaggeration. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think things have changed and, and that's a whole, you know, whole separate topic. But yeah, workforce, finding um, good people to work in the practice is, it is a challenge. Right. It absolutely is a challenge. Right. And that's always been a challenge. It's just, it's presenting some unique additions <laughs> to that challenge, I feel like, especially after, you know, 2020 and beyond. Like you and I'm sure uh, other people have faced similar challenges. And if you don't mind sharing with our audience, what were some of the unusual challenges or out of the ordinary, so to speak, from your prior years that you were facing uh, post-2020? I think big picture wise, you know, I would love to have a discussion with somebody and you're dialed into this as you know, you're mm-hmm. far more savvy and knowledgeable than I am about the macro stuff, but you know, like what happened to our workforce big right. picture wise? Well, that affected my small business as it did lots of small businesses um, and continues to do so at this, at this time. And people decided to leave the workforce and then all of a sudden you had, you know, the work from home right. opportunities crop up. And I didn't think that would touch us in the dental biz because I thought, well, you know, you need to be present in dentistry right. and that's what you do. You, that there's, you know, dentistry tried to do teledentistry a little bit, but that's, it's okay, but it's not as quite as like telemedicine. But mm. anyway, so there was work from home opportunities that actually did take employees out of our market. I can give you examples right now in our, in our area of people who I would love to hire, mm-hmm. but they are working remotely from a company that they may be a hundred or 200 miles away from, but they can do their work remotely. So let's say a really, really good dental auxiliary. This absolutely did happen here. We'd like to bring you on board because we need some good dental dental auxiliaries. Well, no, she's perfectly happy working remotely for a kind of a DSO type organization and doing computer uh, management of inventory and some, some schedule management on the computer online. Hmm. Okay. That those those types of things happened, and and then just our situation, there's just not that many people mm-hmm. to draw from, and most of the people that we've hired, we've kind of built up from basically very little or no knowledge in the dental field, and kind of built them up, and that's that can be very good. They can some of the best auxiliaries that we've had have gone that through that path, but it's just, we just don't have that many people to draw from. And that is, that can be difficult. Yeah. And I'm sure it's time consuming as well. I mean, as much as fruitful it may be for, you know, the mentor, it takes out precious time. It absolutely does. Because as you can imagine, you know, with a trained experience of auxiliary, Mm -hmm the practice is more capable and and the workflow is just more efficient putting in the effort to teach and demonstrate and you know step by step show i enjoy that but you have to slow down a great deal to to do that now the hope is that eventually that pays off and you end up with somebody that's you know well trained and and is happy to do what they do and a good relationship that that lasts a long time but it's always a bit of a risk that somebody would, you know, a year or two into it say, no, this is, this is actually not for me and I'm, and I'm going to go somewhere else. Right. And then you start the process over. So mm-hmm. that, that has also happened too. And I know that some DSO type entities have implemented something like, you know, uh, training on the job where they bring in people from other industries and train them in this field so they can do their job. And it may have had good results for quite a few of them just because, you know, the starting pay could be less than what the market is. And even though there's additional time spent on them, it kind of makes sense. But again, a DSO type entity will have the right resources, all the people that are there to just do that. For a small practice like yours or others, you know, in rural parts, it's either going to be you or the office manager, right, who already has a lot on their plate. Right. You're precisely right. Um, that all the individuals in the practice already have their 
plate pretty full. Mm -hmm. And so in order to accomplish that, yeah, everybody has to, you know, shift a little bit and, you know, take on part of that responsibility. Yeah, sure. A, a, a large, uh, large corporate office type situation. Yeah. You've got the resources, you've got the time, you've got the financial wherewithal to, mm -hmm. to work through that. The smaller practices are just going to find that a little bit, a little bit more challenging. And that's when I feel like, you know, small business owners have to come up with creative ways to mitigate some of these challenges, you know, with minimal resources and with utilizing what they have. I mean, of course, the, that is there, right? The uh, top level management people are putting in extra time to do that. Train people, maybe cross train people. Uh, come up right. with various systems to form a cadence and then to have a very efficient uh, running system. But again, hard work takes time, effort, energy, takes time away from the family and other things, right? So then you also have to think of, okay, you know what? We still need more people. What do we do? So initially, maybe, you know, you would stick to looking for people only within your city. But now you're like, you know what? I don't see anyone who's really looking for a job within my city. Let me expand my search. So you're having to filter through maybe other neighboring cities to find, you know, someone to help you out. But then they have these other demands, which are unique because they didn't apply within your city, but there are other competition in other cities that are probably offering those things. You're exactly right. So we're currently searching for a hygienist, for example, mm -hmm. and there is, as you know, there's, right. there's a, there's a shortage of, of hygienists throughout the nation, but mm -hmm. particularly in the rural, rural areas, rural states, particularly difficult. But yeah, we're having to expand our search radius and even go, you know, quite a long ways. Um, we're looking now, you know, essentially a hundred miles in any direction for a hygienist that would want to locate here and be a part of our practice. Again, we've got a beautiful office, really nice practice, great people. But yeah, but attracting somebody into a rural setting, mm -hmm. not the easiest task. And, and yes, oh, the sure. best option is to find somebody from your community or, you know, we're, we're talking to high schools and, 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 you know, seniors in high school and, and asking, hey, have you ever thought of dental hygiene as a career? And maybe that will produce somebody who wants to partner with us and let's let's say let's you know let's help you with your school and let's help you get through the program but that's right. years away so what can we do in the short term we have to cast a wide net and so yeah we're we're reaching out like i said probably 100 miles in any direction mm -hmm. seeing if there's somebody who would like to to join our office join our practice now we did have some success just attracting a uh, expanded functions dental assistant re recently or, or I believe I, I, I think that's going to go. I shouldn't mention her name, uh, and I, and I hope I don't jinx myself. But anyway, the, uh, the ad was seen by a person who let this other person know, and she was in a different state and thinking about maybe locating here, maybe, and uh, looks like that might work out. But that's somebody from quite a long ways away that we're hoping to bring back and say, hey, this is a nice place to be. And, and why don't you come with us and, and uh, do what you love to do. And, and we want to be, we want to help you do that. So yeah, definitely having to get creative, definitely mm -hmm. have to having to look at being persistent and trying to be competitive, you know, of course, with, with wages and benefits and things like that, which that's the most amazing thing really post COVID is that, you know, yeah, your, your workforce has, has shrunk. Um, and some people have left the dental industry or taken other, like we were talking about, like kind of connected to dental, but not really in a dental office that's mm -hmm. happening. But then the salaries that you, uh, as a business owner are needing to look at to, um, bring people onto your team, that's significant. And that's been something, you know, we, I've always felt like I want to be a, a good employer and. I want people to be, be feel like mm -hmm. they're being paid well and they're being taken care of. That that's important to me. I, mm -hmm. I that I want to I want the people who work in the office to feel good about where they work. But now when you have just across the board wages going up, 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 okay, that's that's for a smaller practice. 
that's a little bit harder to deal with because you you have to compete with that. Mm-hmm. But maybe your your business model wasn't wasn't really uh, taking that into account previously. But now you do have to take that into account. Mm-hmm. And how are you going to now work with that? Well, you're going to have to raise fees, which mm-hmm. again don't like to do that really uh, because the public already is pretty sensitive to dental fees and they Mm -hmm. feel like dentistry is expensive, but Mm -hmm. there's not really a whole lot of uh, alternatives really at this point. You kind of have to, in order to keep, in order to keep or attract or keep your staff, that's what we've felt found that we've have to do. And there may be other alternatives, you know, that may apply to some other dentistries, you know, like dropping out of certain PPOs and going completely fee for service. But even those kind of changes, they take time. It can't just happen overnight. However, the increase in staff wages, that kind of did happen overnight. Yeah. And you would have you know, really good insight into that too, because you talk to a lot of different practices and and what they're seeing, but man, we feel like we are a good place to work. We've got good wages, good benefits. It's a, it's an interesting job. There's pathway to advancement. So there's a lot of things, but then when you see, you know, you just go, go look around and you see, um, McDonald's or Wendy's and they, they, (laughs) they are starting at 19 or 20. Well, okay. Okay, that's that's just the <laughs> landscape that we're in. That's um, true. So that's you know, it's just different. It's just different. Now, speaking of coming up with creative ways to go about this, you actually decided to do something about it. Take matters into your own hand and take on this new initiative. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. So we have been looking for a hygienist for all of 2023. Okay, mm-hmm. we've been out without one since January of 2023. And so that's obviously changed how our operation works. And then that was a big shock. And there's a lot of, a lot of emotions connected to that, which, which probably don't need to go into, but (laughs) we started to think about, okay, what are we going to do? What's our option? So just happened to be reading. Mm -hmm. And I saw that Illinois passed a provision that would al- allow expanded functions, dental assistance to provide coronal scaling or, or scaling of the teeth above the gum line on teenage patients. Wow. And I thought, wow, that makes a lot of sense to me. That is super interesting. Why is that interesting? Well, because you could take a a trusted auxiliary that you have in your office and send them through a training. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think Illinois, it's a, it's like a 32 hour course plus an exam. And then you get a license to do that. And then, so it's not, it's not replacing a hygienist. I would never ever say that. And, Mm -hmm. and honestly, if there's hygienists listening, I, I don't want to infuriate because there is a little bit of, um, maybe hard feelings associated with that. But in the absence, like a practice like mine, in the absence of a hygienist, which which we can't necessarily attract a hygienist or haven't been able to, I believe it makes a lot of sense to to take a trusted, good auxiliary Mm -hmm. and send them through that type of program and then say, okay, now you can help do some of these appointments and, and, take a little bit of the backlog off the doctor who is, you know, so literally just like like we're trying to make the practice, you know, keep going. Let's find ways to use the people that we have Mm -hmm. to accomplish that. So that's not legal in South Dakota. So Illinois just passed that. Mm -hmm. Kansas has been doing that for a long time. Missouri has that. California has that. So there's some other states that are working on that. So I brought that up to our executive director of the South Dakota Dental Association, and he was very interested in that. And turns out there are some other dentists independently in South Dakota who have come to that conclusion that that could be a good thing. So I started having some conversations and people started to say, yeah, that maybe that makes sense for us. Um, And then so then there was a 
um, Oral Health Coalition, a task force that was put together, um, which I was very kindly asked to be a part of, right. that's looking at how could how can South Dakota utilize the personnel in dentistry better? And that's one of the ideas. And the other ideas are, you know, let's look at what it means to be an expanded functions dental assistant. Let's look at what what um, dental hygienists are able to do. And maybe there's some things that they can um, they, they can be doing that can improve our workforce development a little bit. Um, so I, I'm encouraged by it. I think it's something that would really help somebody in my situation. It would help, I think, a great deal. And I know for certain that there are other practices, especially rural areas, that are in the same boat. And I just think it's a maybe a creative idea. Uh, like I said, it would never, never take the place of a hygienist. In mm-hmm. fact, if I had that provision Monday, mm-hmm. and then on Tuesday, I had a hygienist say, I'd love to put in my application to work at Whole Dental Health, I would absolutely, absolutely hire that hygienist. But in the absence of that, I, I think it could be a good thing. So I'm, I am hopeful that maybe we could do something like that and and that could help out um at least be one little thing that could help out so we'll see what happens but so far we're still talking about that we'll see if we can maybe put that into uh effect maybe next year i don't know we'll see that actually sounds amazing i mean i remember the first time when i heard this from you i thought wow what a great way to go about this and i'm sure yeah. there are people out there listening to this that's thinking the same thing. Um, I guess my next question would be, so to actually make it happen, what would be, what would you need to achieve or, you know, uh, by next year to actually make it happen? Yeah. So we're, we're working with, there's two colleges that provide dental assisting programs mm-hmm. and working with the directors of those programs mm-hmm. um, because they would need to format their own program. And so you'd be able to, you would need that in place. We would also need the state board to, well, first of all, the dental association to say, yes, we want to do this. And then the state board to agree that, yes, okay, we, we are going to do this. So, th- so there's some, there is some politics involved there. Mm-hmm. There is, okay. you know, obviously some, some voting and some approvals and, and the dental community in the state needs mm-hmm. to agree that, yes, we think this is a safe and be a, be a, a reasonable idea and, and agree to do that, create the permit, create the program. And the, the awesome thing about that though, mm-hmm. I think is because you already have dental assisting programs that are, we have really, we have two really good programs and we have the programs are good. The people who, who administer those programs are really good. Mm-hmm. You could make this change happen with, um, you know, pulling a few levers here and there and produce this change, I think in a pretty cost effective way, you know, there's been talk about maybe, you know, the, um, so there's one hygiene school in South Dakota, mm-hmm. U S uh, university of South Dakota and Vermilion that's on the Eastern part of the state. There was talk about maybe putting a dental hygiene program in the Western part of the state, maybe in rapid city. I see. That's awesome. That would help our state a great deal. But to create an entire new hygiene program, a new facility, new faculty, new, you know, new curriculum, okay, that's obviously expensive and that takes time to do. That could take, you know, five years, six years, eight years, who knows? Mm-hmm. This, what we're talking about, the beauty of it is, I think you could put this together with fairly limited cost and fairly short time frame. And I think it could be a win for essentially everybody involved. But the biggest obstacle is getting people to understand the need because not everybody understands the need. If you're in a metro area Mm -hmm. and you have the staff that you need and everything is running along great and your numbers are great and everything's great and you might not see the need for this and you might think, well, why, why should we, why should we be making changes and do things like this? Because I'm fine. Our biggest hurdle is to convince 
dental offices who are fine, that there are other offices who could benefit if this change would be made. And the change would be safe to implement because that's always, you know, the really big concern is, is what you are proposing going to be safe for the public in general? There's not going to be any compromise of, you know, the the dental health care if we let this pass or if we if we introduce this and and my position is that it would be safe because you would have a doctor's exam at the conclusion of that appointment to make sure that that's safely done so a dental hygienist can operate independently but if we had an expanded functions auxiliary who was providing coronal scaling Mm -hmm. first of all it has to be cleared by the dentist and then there's a dentist exam at the end to make sure that that was done properly. So I think the opportunity for harm to come from that or 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 substandard care to be um, provided, I think is 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 low. So I think I think it has has fairly low risk, fairly low cost, and fairly high benefit to the practice associated with that. Also, I think it's good for the auxiliary who would go through that because more training, more education, more responsibility for them, more job satisfaction and higher wage because of of increased responsibility mm-hmm. and increased efficiency to the practice. So win for the auxiliary, win for the practice, also win for the patients because uh, if the practice isn't backlogged and struggling to meet those needs, uh, right. they can be seen uh, sooner. So I see pretty low downside to it. Well, that's, I, I think it could be good. I, and I hope it, I hope it can move along. I hope people can see why it could be good. So I'm, I'm optimistic. Right, right. No, and I'm completely on board with your cause. I mean, uh, the precedence has already been set by other states, right? So it's, you're just trying to see if it can also be implemented in South Dakota. Yeah. And, you know, I've reached out to the Dental Association in Illinois. I would love to know what what triggered them to go in and look at this and do this. Mm-hmm. I haven't been able to have communication there, but I have to believe that it's similar types of things. So maybe I'll be able to have that conversation at some point. But yeah, and you know what's amazing? So they're the most recent one. Kansas has been doing this since the late 90s, I believe, which is pretty amazing as I started to look into this, that Kansas figured this out quite a while ago and seems to be doing pretty well. Seems to be doing pretty well. So yeah, interesting that that I, yeah, I had not heard of it prior to earlier this year. Mm-hmm. And I thought, yeah, but, you know, hey, that that could make some sense. So We'll see. And again, from a safety standpoint, as you said, there will be oversight by the dentist, right? Before the patient is. Yeah. You know, yeah, completely. absolutely. I mean, there would be certain patients that that probably is not a, a suitable thing to do or a good thing to do or not a, you know, not maybe not the right type of circumstance to utilize that. Mm-hmm. But there absolutely would be patients who uh who that would be appropriate for and that could be helpful helpful for and useful for and they still have like we were mentioning like so there's there's still a safeguard of quality care in place so they're not being shortchanged they're not being mistreated right um it's just a different way of doing it maybe Mm -hmm. and because the landscape has changed like we were saying so so then we need to change maybe a little bit to um to adapt yeah oh absolutely and i'm also thinking i'm like you know it's not like they're going to be doing anything periodontal that's still the hygienist you know realm it's just anything above the gum line right absolutely yeah and and you know anything that's beyond that uh, in my circumstance, so that would be my responsibility. I'm going to handle that, and I'll have the discussions, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll do the charting, we'll do everything that's appropriate, everything the way it should be done. But then I'm going to handle that. In an office that has a hygienist, well, uh-huh. then that is his or her responsibility to handle that, and the auxiliary can handle their portion of that. But yeah, basically from the from the gum line up. Okay, that's the coronal scaling, and anything uh, below, then that's we're gonna we're gonna have to do something different. Would never argue anything beyond that, 
because you know there's there's some there's some good reasons uh, for that. Mm-hmm. But I think it could be something in in a lot of people's situation, a lot of patients. Uh, I, I think it would work well for. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine so. Absolutely. So at this point, you know. I feel like the people that are fine with the way things are, they have a louder voice than some of the other yeah, practices they, you know, that are not so fine. Yeah, true. Uh, so that's where you come in, I feel like. And I feel like, you know, you've taken that initiative, that step. And, you know, uh, today we're using this platform to kind of put the message out there. And I'm sure we'll try to find other platforms where, you know, you could put your voice out there as well and be heard, right? It's like, no, it's not fine. There are some people where this would make a big difference. Yeah, um, exactly. There's offices who will say, you know, I don't, I don't want to get into those changes. I don't want to change these permits. I don't want to create that because, you know, we're getting along. We're getting along and we're, we're good. But you know what? I, I think what I've been told in, in even more the urban areas is there's a lot of competition for staff and there's, you know, what I would say is that you're, you're just one Monday away from coming into work and, and having the conversation that uh, your hygienist is leaving for another office and being poached. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that word, but you're being, your hygienist is being drawn away mm-hmm. into another office for, you know, maybe a tiny little amount to pay more or something more or just mm-hmm. who knows what which is kind of what happened with us. Um, so you're, you're just, you're just one day away from that going on. And then, and then you'll be in our shoes and then <laughs> you might wish that you had uh, been in favor of this because it, it could make a difference. And, and if things are fine, great. I'm, I'm happy for you. Awesome. Uh, that's, that's great. But there are seasons in business where things aren't great. You know, we, we want the graph to go from left to right, up, mm-hmm. up, up. Everything is green arrows up. That's not the way small business always goes. Yeah, um, right. So, you know, one thing I will say, though, is what, what it's done is it's allowed us to focus on, you know, who we are, mm-hmm. what our culture is, what matters mm-hmm. to us. And so, yeah, I am acting as the hygienist now. And honestly, that's fine because I'm getting to spend more time with my patients. I'm getting to talk with them more, interact with them more, mm-hmm. communicate that we want that relationship present. So it, it's been negative in a financial sense, but then there's been other things that, you know, other maybe non-financial things that have been positive. Right. And just, just getting to, I guess, relate to our patients more. And I think that's that's been that's been that's been good Mm -hmm. no absolutely absolutely and you've spoken like a true seasoned business owner that you know we can't (laughs) just focus on the quantitative part what makes a business last is the qualitative part right like focusing on the relationship dentistry side of it and allowing our hygienists the time to do that by allowing this you know auxiliary dental assistant that can do more so, no, I'm all for it. I mean, as you mentioned, I speak with many different clients from different parts of the country. And, you know, the staffing issue, the employment landscape has been the big topic of conversation the entire year. And uh, people think that it's gotten better since, you know, 2020. And in a way, I guess, maybe in some areas, but there's still as you mentioned issues and it's just i feel like whatever you read online those are the remarks of the people that say we're fine because the voice is louder right Um, yeah but of course there are other businesses that are suffering what do you think happened and honestly Mm -hmm. i would love to know but i've been paddling so hard keeping my own business afloat Mm -hmm. that I, i don't really have time to dig in and research which shame on me but what do you think has happened to small business workforce or, or actually in particular dental workforce in the last couple of years? It has, well, from what I've heard and seen, uh, starting off with the hygienists, it was mostly the great resignation, right? When COVID 
kicked in and people were forced to stay within closed doors. Um, for some people, it was a nightmare. For others, they were like, oh my goodness, I never realized how fulfilled I feel feel when I'm with my family, right? I haven't spent right. as much time with my kids and whatnot. I feel like my work is taking out so much of my precious time that uh, I should be able to, you know, cut my hours so I can do that. And what they, they've done is a lot of them, they actually decided to downsize. They said, you know what? I don't feel like we need two incomes for this family. Maybe just one person can work and the other person can just stay home, spend more time with the kids, um, have a more fulfilling life. We'll move to a smaller house. Um, so a lot of that has happened where they just completely left the workforce. And then for others, what I've seen is um, the rise of DSOs, really. They've been there for a while, but I feel like they've really taken advantage uh, the past few years of buying out a lot of practices. And what they typically yeah. do is they have like this benefit plan, the wage paying system that's pretty much the same all across the board. Um, again, different DSOs have different business models, but I'm talking about the ones I spoke to. And oftentimes what we see is that that package, the compensation along with the benefits, sometimes will outweigh what, let's say, a single practice owning independent owner is able to provide. And those little changes and the way it's marketed to them also seems like, wow, what have I been doing? You know, let me move somewhere else because I feel like I deserve better. I should be getting paid more. I should be getting all these benefits. And I hear my friends getting all of these things. So I'm not, I don't want to feel left behind. So then they move. Now, the other factor, and this will depend on the demographic, right? We sometimes do surveys with e even the people we hire. You know, about five, ten years ago, the number one criteria that they would look for in employment would be compensation. These days, however, it has shifted to culture. Yeah, so, you're right. So, you yeah. know, the company culture is also another thing. Now, I know your office has a great culture. But unfortunately, I don't think I can say the same for all the people I work with. So even though they're giving out good money, you know, market rate or maybe even a little bit higher, proper benefits, uh, they're just not liking the culture. Maybe there's some drama in the front desk area or with some other people and they just feel like, oh, nobody's addressing the toxicity or this. Um, I'll just move somewhere else, you know, or they just want a clean slate. I feel like a lot of realizations happened with uh, the workforce in the past five years. And they may have had these realizations before, but they decided to take a stand for it because I think COVID was so real that you may just not be there sometimes. Like you, you, may yeah. just, you know, I think that was so real that people decided, okay, you know what? I need to do something about this. Time is so little. I don't know what can change. I need to do whatever I've always wanted to do right now, right now. I think you're absolutely right on. Yeah. I think we're seeing the effects of that carry on. You know, here we are, we're at the end of 2023, yeah. but the effects from that time frame is still kind of carrying on, at least in the small business mm -hmm. realm. And you're right. A small practice like us, you know, we have advantages. We can be more relatable. We can be more personable. We mm -hmm. can provide um, a, a different feel. Mm -hmm. than the big practices but yeah the the big practices the big certainly the big corporate the big dso yeah they have an unmistakable advantage over that i feel like what i'm doing is kind of going away i feel like i'm kind of watching like you know the the single sole proprietor mm -hmm. practice kind of going away and everything kind of shifting into into that world and and maybe it was hastened by covid maybe you're right or maybe it's just kind of a kind of a parallel track that was happening and we're just kind of lumping that together. Yeah, it's, the landscape is is definitely different. Uh, we're gonna continue to do our best. Yeah, you know, and adapt, we, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's all we can do, right? Yeah, and you're doing it. I mean, honestly, you're like a symbol of hope right now. I remember <laughs> when I first heard that, I'm like, oh my goodness, I love this idea. And he's actually doing something about it. He's just not talking about it, he's doing something about it. Well. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we were kind of down now, you know, kind of having a pity party. But then, yeah, we said, okay, well, mm -hmm. what can we do? You know, what what can we do? This is the reality. So, mm -hmm. gather yourself. Let's you know, let's get over the let's get over being pouty. Let's think about what are we going to do. There's things that you can do. 
So we're, we're trying to do what we can. And, you know, we're trying to bring new services available. One thing that we, it's been my dream to be able to provide sedation for the practice. And fortunately, I did take that training in 2022. Mm-hmm. And now that's paying off so that we can do the IV sedation to provide those types of services. And that leads to, you know, hopefully some revenue for the practice that's made that available. So looking at different services, looking at a different mix and, you know, just getting back to good old customer service. I I tell my staff, Mm -hmm. this world doesn't do customer service anymore. You know that now you, you are, you are a wonderful example of customer service. I've been so, so impressed with how you conduct your business and Edwards um, conducts themselves. But Generally, this world doesn't do customer service anymore. So that's my message to our to our office is that we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to make people feel like they've been taken care of. And we're going to do that one day at a time. And hopefully that will, you know, make a difference and cause people to see a difference. So, right. Right. yeah, that's that's one strategy. Yes. And I applaud you for that, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. I wish you all the best. Yeah. Really, from the bottom of my heart, we're towards the end of our episode. So, uh, if there are any final notes that you would want for our listeners to, you know, pay extra attention to, or maybe you know, recruit some people <laughs> to your cause, uh, this would be a good time for your plug. Yeah. So, I think making use of the people that we have in dentistry currently, mm-hmm. in the you know, um, without trying to attract people from wide range or, or wide geograph- geographic area, mm-hmm. if we can make use of the people that we have currently and expand their abilities, do that in a safe way, a reasonable way, and and let them help do what they can to help the practice, I think it's good. I think it's great. I would love to see that go on more. We'll see if South Dakota can do that. I hope so. But my message to people who are struggling is hang in there, take a real, real close look at your culture, provide really good customer service, take care of your people, take care of your employees, take care of your patients and hang in there and keep going and look at what you can do. Um, because there's almost always an option or, or there's almost always a, uh, a way that you can work a strategy that you can implement or something new you can try and, yeah, that's what we've tried to do. Oh, yeah. Great tips. No, absolutely. I agree. Well, thank you, Dr. Hull, for being on our episode. Really, really appreciate that you were able to take out some of your precious time to be here on air with us. Ash, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for asking me. Um, it's been a great, uh, great experience. I've enjoyed talking with you. Absolutely. Same here. And I look forward to doing another episode with you. Yeah, who knows? It could happen. Maybe I'll have uh, some exciting news uh, a little bit down the road we can talk about. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening today. Be sure to subscribe to Beyond by Wings on your favorite podcast platform. For more information, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Or reach out to us on our website. You can also shoot us an email at info at eandassociates.com. 